Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. So far we have talked about a lot of things. We have had a very little discussion about DevOps itself. Today we are going to talk about DevOps, continuous integration, continuous deployment and things like that. You can show the appreciation by actually liking the video. I don't agree with this meme. Uh, it takes a lot of effort and uh, time in making any video. I would say if you like the content, you should like the video. I'm not just talking about me, but uh, any creator. Anyway, so what is DevOps? DevOps is like a very misunderstood term. To say the least, it's a software development methodology. Actually, before we talk about what is DevOps and uh, what exactly does it bring to the table, let's take a step back and uh, talk about software development in general. Okay, so if we take a company, a software company, uh, you know, that develops software and um, or a service or whatever, they will have developers. This, this could be like, you know, the front end engineers, the back end engineers or whatever. They basically write code and they are the ones actually building the product. That code includes new features, bug fixes, uh, security updates and a lot of things. And finally, they also have the responsibility to fight the operations team. So then we have the operations team. So they run the infrastructure. They make sure that the servers are staying up and obviously make sure that the servers are comfortable and cozy. Also, they release the software given by the developers. Again, I'm talking about the traditional operations team. And obviously they have to fight the developers. That goes without saying. All right, so now we have two different teams, but they both have the same goal. They want to get their software released to the uh, their customers. So how does this software gets released? Uh, what is uh, the procedure or a model to follow? First of all, we have the waterfall model. This is the old way of doing things. So what is the waterfall model? So it has a few phases, as you can see. I just copied this directly from Wikipedia. It doesn't really mean much, but uh, uh, you know I have seen this same graph in so many presentations. So here it is. Let's just keep things simple. If you are developing a product, there are a lot of ways you could go about it. In waterfall model, what you do is you divide the whole project into different phases. So in this case, we have the requirements, then the design, implementation, verification, and maintenance. So this requirements is the, the phase where you talk to the client or um, you know, whoever you are developing the software for, what are the requirements, what needs to be there, what kind of features should be there, and all kind of stuff. You have the discussion and uh, the decisions are made in this phase. And once you have all the requirements in place, you go to the next step, which is the design. So you have to design the software architecture. You have to design what kind of services you need and what language to use, all kind of stuff. And once you have an entire design for the software from end to end, you go in to implement that. You actually write the code. And uh, once you have done that, you go in to you know, make sure that everything is working properly. And then the next step would be to maintain the whole thing. Each phase could take months depending on the size of the project. And each phase depends on the output of the free, uh, previous phase. And you cannot go back a level. So what it means is if you are in the uh, implementation level, you are already writing the software, you cannot go back and change the design. I mean, you can, but it's gonna come with a huge cost. It's gonna be very difficult to go back. So that means you have to have extremely precise planning and uh, uh, the requirements cannot change. So what's wrong with the waterfall model? Well, obviously it's not flexible. And uh, you know, if the client says, you know, they have to have a different uh, set of requirements or uh, they need to have a new feature, it's gonna be really difficult changing that. After that, there came a lot of different types of software uh, development models, uh, like rapid application development, dynamic systems, uh, extreme programming. You don't have to worry about any of this. Seriously, it's like a lot of buzzwords and there is no reason to learn all of it. The point is to understand why we are doing a certain things. And in this case, we are trying to understand why do we have DevOps methodology in place. So the next software development model is called the Agile model. So Agile means to be able to move quickly and easily. And uh, Google has a big definition uh, here. Software development uh, characterized by division of tasks into shorter phases or whatever. What is Agile? So I just copied this from Wikipedia, no, really. So if you go to Google and search for Agile Manifesto, And uh, there are like you know, 12 principles of Agile software. Uh, I'm not going to explain that. You can go ahead and read it yourself. And I'm not going to explain these things also. It's kind of like boring. So Agile is a philosophy um, or a software development model, right? 
so there is another term called uh, scrum so scrum is the uh, one of the implementation of agile so in scrum i think this is the one that's adopted by a lot of companies at least the ones that i have seen so what happens is like when you have a huge project you break down the entire uh, project uh, into smaller tasks a single task is uh, usually taken care of by a single engineer and uh, so that gives them the autonomy to work on that without too much of distraction and then you have this thing called a stand up it's like a meeting uh, that you have every day so basically what happens is everyone in the team they will just stand in a circle and you know talk to uh, each other about what they were doing and um, what are the kind of difficulties that they are having and um, what's working and what's not working so based on this they can make changes if needed so after you reach like a big milestone uh, let's say after like a, a few weeks or a month or so depending on the size of the project you will have a big discussion a big meeting with um, everyone uh, you know discussing all the changes that you did and um, what's needs to be done in future again this is not at the end of the whole thing uh, the whole product is de uh, developed but it's kind of like a milestone so basically the whole point is unlike waterfall agile calls for changes to be made at any phase if needed so what's so good about it so if you are developing a product for a client if you have a discussion with the client uh, you know if you take feedback from them and uh, have regular interactions with your clients or customers you will be able to make changes based on what they actually want because if you have worked in software you will know that the clients will not know their actual requirement 100% 100% clearly in the beginning let's look into a more practical scenario so how exactly is software released we're going to take up uh, we're going to talk about two different situations one is pre devops and the other one is devops again i'm just going to give you an idea of how this um how there is a contrast between these two methods this does not mean that this is exactly how it happens in either of this case so let's say that for our setup uh, we have a service or a web application and we have the entire thing in a github repository and uh, we have a bunch of engineers in our team and um, whenever they work on a certain thing uh, be it a bug fix or a, a feature or whatever they work on their own branch and uh, the main branch is the master branch obviously once they are done they will merge it back to the master branch so how is software released first the developers will write their code and in some places at least they will do some tests locally to make sure that everything works fine point here is that this code does not get merged to the master branch occasionally there is a specific time and date for that which is the integration days this is when large changes from different people are integrated uh, into the uh, the main branch or the master branch so obviously if there are like two people working on two different things there's going to be a lot of conflict and it's going to take a lot of time fixing that so once they fix all the conflict they will be able to merge that and this takes a lot of work and then even after the code is uh, now merged to the master branch it does not get deployed because there is a deploy day because again most of these things are done manually and um, the operations team has to prepare for the deploy day so you know they fix all the dependencies or whatever that is needed to fix and then you know they get their environment ready for the deploy and they do the deploy this is like a big um, it's a special day so the code gets uh, released into the uh, production and uh, the operation teams monitor stuff and uh, if there needs to be more servers added they do that so what's wrong with this first of all integration hell meaning integrating a lot of changes back into a common repository is a lot of effort especially when the changes could be conflicting to each other and then there is this you know the development environment and the production environment being very different which brings us to this problem works on my machine and there will be a lot of errors that make their way into the production because there are in very good automated tests in place and anything could wrong with the deploy as well and obviously the human part of you know when humans are doing something manually it is very error prone because humans are unreliable so let's talk about how this thing would turn out in an ideal world with a ideally implemented devops culture again the developers write the code and they will have tests for all the major functionalities ideally they should have tests for all the functionalities so that means after making any change they will run the test to make sure that everything works as expected and it doesn't break any other functionality the key here is incremental changes 
and this incremental change gets merged to the master branch as soon as possible. So after the incremental changes are pushed, there will be a tool. Here I'm just using the generic term tool that runs some automated tests to make sure that everything is working. So this prevents catastrophic failures such as like a, uh, some changes done by a developer breaking another major functionality or something like that. So if the tool you know, gives the green signal, then this pull request gets merged to the master branch. So that means multiple changes are merged to the master branch regularly. So this is why we, this is what we call continuous integration. So once the change is merged to the master branch, again the tool or another tool, it builds a software. Uh, by building it means like, you know, if you have to compile the application or you know, to build a binary or something like that, the tool will do that automatically. This artifact or this resulting thing is ready to deploy at any time. This is what we call continuous delivery because we are ready to deploy at any moment. So if we go and uh, take one step further and deploy it automatically to the production, then we just call it continuous deployment. So what exactly does it mean in a real environment? It means a few things. One, the developers will have several pull requests merge the main branch uh, on a day. It does not mean that it is a requirement that you have to merge your pull requests right away. Obviously, it has to be verified. There has to be a lot of changes and uh, tests and uh, reviews from other people and all kind of stuff. It just means that as far as the master branch is concerned, if there are many people working on different stuff, the master branch will see multiple commits merge to it on a regular basis. So what did we gain with this? First of all, it's going to be very easy to integrate because uh, the changes are very small and we will catch way more bugs than we would otherwise do before even they get to the production environment. Also, if something breaks, it's very easy to identify because the change that got merged into the master is usually very small. So it's like, you know, a pull request code merged to the master branch and suddenly the website stopped working, then we will know that this change in this particular commit is the reason for the entire thing to go wrong. So, you know, we just have to revert it and look at the issue. But if you were to have this integration day with a huge list of changes, then it's gonna take a lot of time trying to figure out what exactly happened. And again, there is no more deploy day drama. For example, we have a, a deployment job that will run every 15 minutes. So if there is any change, um, that's merged in the past 15 minutes, it will get deployed to the production environment. How is that even possible? I mean, if we if we look at a pre-DevOps era, this would seem insane to have a production deploy happen every 15 minutes if, you know, if there's any change. But it is possible with all the tools and uh, all the cultural shift that we have. So we are fairly certain that most of the changes that we make, most of the errors that we make will not make their way into production. Obviously, that does not mean that the, there will not be any outages or there will not uh, be any errors errors that make their way into production. That would be stupid to think so. But the amount of errors that will make their way into production is way, way less than otherwise. And the best thing is the new features gets released to the customers way quicker. And uh, this will give the team and the customers an ability to work together uh, in terms of giving a feedback and uh, the developers fixing the issues or uh, releasing a new feature. Okay, so what is continuous integration? Continuous integration simply means that uh, the changes made by different developers get merged to the main line or the master branch as often as possible. In real time, it just means there will be so many pull requests merged to the master branch on a daily basis. And they will make use of automated tests and uh, stuff like that to make sure that there aren't any errors or there are minimal number of errors that make their way into production. And the continuous delivery means, well, once the software is merged, they will build their software so that it is deliverable or ready to deploy at any time. And uh, continuous deployment means you go ahead and deploy it continuously. So what's the difference between continuous deployment and delivery? In delivery, it's that the software is ready to deploy. In the deployment, it just gets deployed automatically, that's it. So overall, with DevOps, we have automation. So this is the key word with DevOps, automation. So we have to automate the code testing, uh, you know, integration, building, deployment on all kinds of stuff. Long story short, automate anything that's possible to automate. So what does automation helps us with? First of all, it saves a lot of time. And then more importantly, it reduces human errors. So once you write a code to do something, it's always going to do that same thing over and over again, unlike a human being that can make a mistake. So with the DevOps, we have automation and we integrate the code more often and we try to have a similar production and development environment. The team share their responsibilities and there is a direct ownership. For example, we have uh, automated monitoring and alert for all of them. So if something is wrong with the server or the infrastructure itself, we can alert the operations team directly. Or if there is something wrong with the application itself, 
we can directly alert the development team and everybody owns the production it's a team effort you know no single person owns it this is not an exhaustive list of all the good things or bad things about devops it's just an idea of how things are different from how it used to be so that's pretty much it for this video and uh, in the next one we're gonna have discussion about continuous integration and continuous development uh, sorry deployment in detail and we're gonna have set up jenkins and um, automated pipelines and things like that so See you in the next one.